uh, <clears throat> my HW45. Just gonna change out the main seal. The reason for that, I'll get into it. Once I pull the old one out, I'll show you why I'm changing it. It still fires, but being a bit, I don't know, what's the word here? Uh, type A, anal, OCD about things. I'll show you why I'm changing it. Uh, they're not hard to strip. The Getting the spring out to get to the piston, getting the piston out, that can be a pain in the ass. But, I'll show you when we get to it, I'll show you. Great little gun, nice and heavy, plenty of reviews out there on them. Wyrock HW45. So, let's go. Could actually leave one of these on if you chose to, but for the sake of two screws, can't damage them if they're not there. Importante, <laughs> okay. Take note of this. See this thing? This is the safety cocking, the bear trap. Okay. So let's push down here, I don't know if you can see that, but before we go any further, lock it down, I don't know if you can see there, there's a little hole, right, oh, where's my pointing stick, you'll do, yeah, there's a little hole here, okay, what we're going to do with that, is take, and you can use pretty much anything, paper clip, R clip, anything you got at hand that fits through the hole. See? Just a little R clip. Okay. Just make sure we do that and it stays there till we're done. Okay. And the reason for that is once you take the governs out, if that's not pinned back, it shoots forward and your sears will spin around and it just keeps all your sears and your trigger gear locked in position. Right, so it was checked, it is empty. Right. So now we've done that, pop that off. First job is to take this fella out. And we do that with a little Two mil, I think it is. Hey, I'm right. Makes a change. That just locks in that pin. Don't have to take it out. Just loosen it off plenty. You can do this with it locked down. Okay, but it puts pressure on that pin. So, just take the pressure off. That's it. See, it'll just push out, put it somewhere safe. Once that's off, your cocking arms here, it'll come up like that, bring it back. It's a little, little fiddly in there. Now you see them, they're hooked, they just hook in there. That's it, barrel's off. You're changing the barrel for some reason. Uh, these two and that one, that's it. You can get it out. I need to worry about that. We're not doing that. That's a two and a half mil. Uh, this fella, this screw here, I believe two and a half, is it? I want to say maybe three. Yeah, two and a half. So that one. Can be quite tight. Assuming this is all in shot. <laughs> Just in case it's not. That one. Can we leave it? 
that. Yep, grease everywhere. No need to touch this one. Just hold to the so next is this guy here. This one's actually quite tight. You're gonna have to tap him out with a with a drift. And a little hammer. Same diameter as the front one, just a little longer. Okay, so big one back. There you go. It's pretty simple. There's only two of them. If you can't remember it, you probably shouldn't be pulling things apart. Anyway, that's that. This thing will actually almost drop out now. further out. Now like I say if this pin wasn't in this comes up and catches your sears yeah they spin around and then you spend hours trying to figure out how to put them back together. Okay so that's that done. Get rid of that, get rid of that. Yeah now let me clean that off. Oh, too much grease on there. Didn't need all that on there. Okay so You really do need some kind of press to get these off. All it is is this pin here. Take that out and releases the spring pressure. I have a wood clamp that I can use. It's not one of the grippy ones. I'll show you. I have other clamps that work better for other gums but this thing works really well just this type make sure it's wound just about all the way in you just need a little bit of extra to take the pressure off because you're going to need all of this because that's how much this spring is pre-compressed be careful of this fella sit it on the top actually let's do it get that off we don't need that Okay, I do clamp this in a vice to do it, which I'm going to do, it's just over there, it'll be off shot, but uh, when you do it, get out of a rag, anything, and keep it like that, as you unwind it, after you've taken, you put a little bit of pressure in, knock the pin out, pins sideways, that's where the screw goes in. To hold it into there okay a uh, little bit of pressure take the pressure off the end cap knock that pin out wind it back but when you do as soon as the end cap comes out about this far then it's basically on that spring and this will up down shoot and the end cap will go flying because like I said you got it all the way back here and there's still a little bit of pressure on it This is not the best way to do it, but it works for me. And if you're doing this all the time, I'd make a proper compressor for it like I have the others. But anywho. anywho get it lined up. Put that little bit of pressure on there.
Let's see, and you can wind this off. So actually, I'll try and do it so you can see it, but normally I would do this in a vice. So, in fact, let's do it without it. So just wind it slowly. And as you can see, the end cap's about to come free. At that point, this likes to bounce up and down because it's just a free spring. So I've got hold of it on this end, hopefully. See, it wants to go down. See it spinning around? Jumping about. Oh, this is so much easier in the vise. I'll be putting it back together in the vise, that's for sure. See how it's trying to want to jump? how much it compresses but I mean this little bit's easy to get in so but like I say putting it back exactly opposite to that but I'll be doing that in the vise trying to keep a hold of that see that's that bit of shear on there don't lose the end cap don't lose the pin Uh, if you get one of the worst of those tin bum kits, tuning kits, you get rid of this metal one and he supplies a plastic one and another plastic, I say plastic, some kind of polymer, plastic for this end, which actually would make that going in easier. And now it's apart, I got some rod I might actually turn down a couple on the lathe to see if I can replace that I might I might not I might just measure it and then see about turning them uh, anywho there's your spring the bit we're after is the piston and the reason we're changing it I'll show you be careful you don't gouge anything. See, that's most of the way out. There you go. See, there's the seal there. Okay. The reason I'm changing it is I've already fixed it. But here, I don't know if you can see in there. Get a better light on that. Ooh, that's nasty. And that's not going to work. Wait a minute. But, anywho, anyway, the inside of these two rails here, when they were machined. There was a couple of burrs just on the end here, quite substantial ones, and you could feel them. And I don't know, can you see it? Those two burrs, see how they match up? Yeah, so there's a couple of burrs on there. So, with the Dremel tool and that, got in there roughed it out with the Dremel, then fine sanded it, some wet and dry. Okay. Because, like I say, the piston has to go past that, and it gets cut on the way. It doesn't go past that once it's been fired, I mean it sits down here. But to install it, yeah. So that's been like that since day one. Because unless they manage to get that in somehow, which I doubt. Okay, so that's why we're changing it. It's that simple. So all you've got to do, take this one off, put this one on, reverse the process. Getting it off, not as easy as it looks. 
I'm gonna actually can I've got a kettle over here. I'm gonna boil up some water, get this nice hot and soft. So you don't need to watch that. I know there are some aftermarket ones now you can get they're called parachute type with the slot in it. Right the hats and use. Oh yeah, too much water. Oh no, I've got chemicals in there. A little bit soapy. Don't worry, I don't drink from this kettle. Hey. Set it in some hot water. Set it in some hot water. A few minutes. Softens it up quite a bit. You can do it without the water, but yeah. why make life hard? It's just hot water. That's that done. If you worry about using water on the steel and it'll rust, it's like, trust me, it's hot enough. There'll be no water left on that in a sec. Give them a few minutes in there. Doesn't take long. I'm going to say you can probably push it on without it, but yeah. But I'm say nothing overly crazy about it. Complete reverse. This is a notch. This is a bear trap mechanism. Just drop straight in beautifully. Probably want it straight. There it is. Put it straight because the holes line up. The long pin, remember? What am I not lined up? And there's two shots, so get it evened up. Okay, nice and even. Head in the way, then didn't I? 
This can come out now if you want. Getting these a little bit, not really fiddly, but make sure they're both in. There you go. Just make sure they're both in. It's easier to actually get one not in. Again, it's easier to put this pin front pin back in before you lock the, the top down. Just it's nice and loose. And lock it down. Get it nice and even. A little two mil. You're just pinching it up, don't no need to leave it right. Snug it. Okay. Okay. I don't know if you're aware with the. You can dry fire it like this, like practice fire. Don't cock it. Don't move it on the spring at all. Just open the top cover and put it back down, and that will set the trigger. That'll work. Now you put the cover back on. Put the grips back on. Christ, fumbling about like an old man. Again, don't over tighten things, there's no need. Especially on the grips, I mean, they are wood. That, my friends, is it. Not a big job at all. Nothing fancy. So, I mean, all done with a screwdriver, pointing tool, little hammer, a drift pin, a couple of Allen wrenches, and the clamp itself. You see, and then I guess we'll. Put it on the cronium. See if it flies any better. But I'm not going to show you that because there's plenty of them on the web. People showing you that they can shoot down targets. There you go. HW45. Change the piston seal.